Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on uh, March 3rd, 2021. So we've survived about a, a little over a month of the Biden administration at this point. Uh, but before we jump into anything, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Ever. He is a pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, so let's jump right into the topics of the day. So, uh, boy, I tell you, you know, We've had so many discussions about race on this show, and we just can't seem to shake it. Every two seconds, the <laughs> social justice jack-in-the-box is just popping up and, you know, just surprising us with something new. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll ca- cancel that guy one of these days. <laughs> uh, is, this, is this called racism whack-a-mole? Uh, yeah, that's racism <laughs> whack-a-mole. That, that'll be our that'll be a new topic, you know, our new theme yeah. for our show. Every every other show, it'll be racism whack-a-mole. <laughs> whack-a-mole. <yeah. laughs> that will be our new segment, like knock ahead noise patrol, man. I'd have something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty yeah, pretty soon the show will be an hour long too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, literally, there's so much that happens that we just uh, can't uh, cover it all. But uh uh, anyways, uh, let's let's jump right into it. So, uh, you know, the, the biggest part of the, uh, I, I guess, the, the net of the whole issue, I guess, around so much of this stuff is reparations. And so, uh, you know, uh, Obama recently was on a podcast where uh, with, um, oh, let's see, who was he on that podcast? Oh, I guess he was on the podcast with uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen, I guess. And so he was talking with him about, uh, you know, reparations back when he was president. And he apparently told him that uh, he would have been for reparations, but it was sort of a non-starter because of the politics of white resistance. So, you know, and of course, you know, he never said any of this to the public. So I guess, you know, this is just a a, sort of an MO with lefties, I guess. They just don't tell you what they're really thinking. And then they... they (laughs) They spring it on you. They think you're comfortable or something later on. Uh, but, <laughs> but anyways, uh, you know, maybe that that whack a mole thing again. I guess I don't know. But what do you guys think about this? I mean, you know, coming out and saying, oh, okay, gosh, you know, we weren't talking reparations when you know I was president, but you know, now that uh, uh, you know we're a little bit farther on, yeah, reparations. What do you guys think? Uh, got nothing to do with punishing the innocent or anything yeah, like that. Of course uh, not. Yes, it's, you know, um, I, I don't. I don't know uh, all that resistance. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, I? I didn't even own a slave. No one in my family did, because very few people did. And those that did, basically, uh, had issues with their economy. Uh, at well, actually, the the video that you linked with uh, what what was the gentleman's name that was uh, given a a statement to to Congress? Larry Larry, Larry, Larry uh, Elder. Yeah, Larry, Larry Elder. Elder. Yeah, I mean. That guy just, I mean, how, what can you say uh, well, better well, let me, than let me that? Let preface this for you, Tim, just a little bit. So yeah. uh, the, the, beyond, uh, you know, Obama talking about it, there are, uh, I guess, congressional hearings now starting on this, starting on investigating yes. whether yeah. or not this is. And, you know, all of this seems to spring from California, too, because uh, our wonderful governor, Gavin Newsom, in the heart of pandemic shutdowns and everything else, uh, it was priority for him to also start uh, looking into reparations for the state of California, you know, so, uh, you know, we can oh. pay double, I guess, in California. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so, yeah, I'll let well, you have I, to guess, I, I mean, you know, it, it, churches will have a sponsor, uh, you know, a poor child in, uh, you know, whatever country it might be, uh, Mexico or Cambodia or Costa Rica or whatever. Uh, we could have, um, I, I suppose, I mean, if they really wanted to you know sponsor a black person it could be multi-millionaire basketball player maybe i don't know uh but yeah no yeah so how would a, a black person feel uh if they were relegated to the same situation as some poor uh eight-year-old in um in vietnam or 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 uh 
you know, you name the country. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, do, I don't know. Leon would probably speak to this. Uh, th this would be the question. Would uh, a person of, of color uh, gladly accept a, a handout from, you know, basically a transfer payment from the the bad old white people to uh, to themselves uh, based on something that happened 200 years ago so or so. Speaking for all well, black done, people, done. Leon, here you go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm going to speak for all black people. Yeah. I yeah. wonder who elected me. But the point is, <laughs> I <that> did. <laughs> 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 but but you know this thing you know you know Tim you said you said the right thing at the beginning was that what is about to happen here if this thing ever becomes ever becomes into fruition is that we're gonna make all white people criminals. That's what's gonna happen. You gotta pay for the sins of your forefathers, and you're gonna have to pay it now, and they're gonna make all of us people like me innocent victims of the slave owners who are now dead. And also, I was never a slave. My, I have slave ancestry, but I was never a slave. I was not, well, I have no connection to American slavery, by the way. But we are now going to become victims. We are going to become victims of slavery. So our ancestors were victimized by actual slavery and we are now going to become part of that victimization how many generations later? This is what the poison is. Reparation is the next poison that this Democrats and their, and, and their identity politics is going to inflict upon us. Just look around. Since 1965, they had uh, the Great Society, this war on poverty. Well, we know the answer, okay? Poverty won. They have spent trillions of dollars. Poverty still won. <laughs> now they come up with this new thing that's gonna take us to this racial utopia. They're gonna make, victimize, they're gonna penalize all white folks, and they're gonna make all black folks better off by giving us more money. Oh God, I lost you guys. Oh. Uh -oh. We, still, we still see you, Leon. Yeah, we oh, see I, you I, if you get here. I, I did something. Okay, okay, there we go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. Be careful there when you're when you're gesturing. You know, you yeah, get I know. a little excited. I, I get I get I get, I get all, all bent on the shape, you know. <laughs> just this poison that so get to me. Yeah. I, I so I'm so afraid of it that I, that you know, I, it just keeps me going. Well you you, I, you almost digitally canceled that poison there with the yeah. <laughs> yeah, <yes. laughs> Sadly, it doesn't work for us. I hope in the process <laughs> I don't cancel cancel myself. <laughs> and then here comes Obama. Or uh, quote unquote first black president telling us, you know why he couldn't give us this poison? Because of you white people. You evil white people. You're resisting, you are the resisting that which is so good and wonderful. That's why. So everything, every time we turn around, every time we turn around and something is wrong with the, in the black community, or some disparity we see between whites and blacks, it's always you evil white people causing it. And that's what Obama is saying right there. And this has been the message we've been getting since the 1960s. Don't worry, you're not responsible for yourself. It's those white people that have their boot on your neck. Mm. And this is the poison that they are spreading to our, 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 th this generation. They never talk about the things that are important in the black community. They never talk about it, these Democrats, they never do. What about absent fathers? Mm. That is one big problem in the black community. Who is talking about it? What about jobs? What about an education system that black and brown kids can have where they can walk out of school with a diploma and they can actually read the words in the diploma? What about that? How about teaching them reading, and writing, and arithmetic so, that, so they can become functional citizens? No, we're going to concentrate on something that happened that ended so 150 years ago, and we're going to say, oh, we're going to help you now. This is poison. That's what it is. Poison. Well, you know you know what I think, too, and, and some of this poison that's, I guess, insidious is that, is that they never quantify any of this stuff either. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's this, 
amorphous, you know, uh, yeah, ideas like things like equity and stuff. You know, it's funny, you know, how they think that, uh, you know, apparently math is racist, you know. Now. <laughs> and, Tell uh, me this thing. Yes. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, I mean, it just it goes hand in hand with the fact that they never want to quantify anything. You know, this is always something that, you know, it's 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 just a big problem that has to be dealt with. I mean, if, if you think about the problems that people dealt with 50 years ago compared to the problems people are dealing with today and you kind of set those aside relative to each other. I mean, it, it's just hard to imagine. I, I just can't imagine going up to a guy, you know, 50, 60 years ago. And telling him about the problems of people today, and and expecting him to, you know, feel yeah. sorry for people today. Exactly. Just, you know, and it's, yeah. it's just so ridiculous to see to see people walking around with a nice fancy cell phone, the Nike shoes, and everything else, and that stuff, and looking around society and saying, you know, we are oppressed. They're driving a little car. They have a nice middle class living. They are they're, they're on a college campus somewhere. You know, we are oppressed. The white man is oppressing us still. And when you think about what blacks have survived in this America, we survived slavery, our ancestors did. We survived Jim Crow. And we are now struggling through the, the, the great society oppression. We have survived these things. For God's sake, please. What are you talking about when you talk you're oppressed now? Are there incidents of racism in America? Of course there is. That will never go away. But that is not the biggest problem in our lives today. It is not. Seriously, it is not. Well, uh, well apparently the uh, there's pushback from certain black people as well as white people. Yes, of course. And I'll bet there but, is. I wonder, I, I wonder what polling data would pull up as far as uh, if they polled you know, the requirement would be to be of color, black, you know, someone from African-American uh, ancestry and, you know, poll those people to see if they want reparations, what percentage want them or think they deserve them and what percentage don't think they deserve them. I, I'd be interested in that poll. I, 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 I think there was a poll on that, you know, Tim, and I mm -hmm. want to say it's, it is a, it's a slight majority that is in favor of reparations, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, okay, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's just slight, you know. Yes, it's just a slight majority. I'll check on that and I'll, I'll report back on that um, okay. on a future show. But, but, but the whole thing about it now, if, even here, and this, is, and this is where the poison begins, okay? Well, another, another phase of the poison. So who's going to qualify for, for, um, for these reparations if they ever come into fruition? I'll give you a very good example within my own family. My two boys both born here in the united states in houston texas both black americans by every measure that you can think about okay they could be president one day if they if they ever so choose and all that with all rights of other black americans but they have no connection both of my children have no connection to american slavery and note i'm saying american slavery they have connections to slavery outside the united states but not to american slavery are they entitled to reparations i don't think so Neither am I, who's also an American citizen. Oh, I can't be president. I would like to be, but I can't be. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I have no connection to American slavery. Look at Barack Obama. Barack Obama, father, black, but African, have no connection to American slavery. His mother, white, but her parents, um, her, her, hands, her ancestors, were slave owners. Now, should Barack Obama, and this was one of the points that Larry Ella raised in, in the video, should Barack Obama should receive reparations? He claimed no. to be black, but should he? No, because his mother had, was a slave-owning family, therefore he should pay. Well, I, I would say so too. He should be paying. He have no connection to American slavery, and his mother was, was his mother's family was, yeah. was slave owners. Well, we have to go back to the family. You know, we have to go back to the ancestors because nobody in, you know, like you say, in the last 150 years uh, had anything whatsoever to do with uh, owning any kind of slave in America, at least. Well, uh, and, and these are where the complications start. This is where the complications yeah. start. Well, who, it, is gonna, who is going to be receiving payments and who is going to be paying? There are many black Americans who have white in them. And some of those, and some of those white, I'm sure, could probably trace back 
to slavery. Mm -hmm. So, so where should they be receiving receiving reparations, or should should they be paying? But this is the problem. This is the identity politics at its worst. Okay, we are all Americans. So whatever happened happened to all of us. Okay, I mean, sure, blacks were enslaved and whites were the slave owners, but not all whites and not all blacks. And this, this is this is the thing. Now they want to make all of us into victims because all of us now suddenly are all connected to this slavery. And all whites are with the slave owners who are connected to the slave owners. It is nonsense. It is well, garbage. Yeah, and this is where I think that the big problem with all this is, is that, you know, any kind of justice in society has to be meted out to the individual, not to... Exactly. To, and it has to be considered and measured. I mean, I, I can't imagine anybody thinking it would be just if somebody just wanders by on the street, shouts an edict at you, and, and suddenly you're condemned to whatever that edict is just because, you know, and that's that's not justice. And this is kind of what this reparations is. Literally, they just kind of look at you and say, oh, you're, you're this hue, so therefore that's you. Yeah. And you're, yeah. you know, I don't I don't need to know anything more about you. And that's that's pretty much, you know, what we've relegated ourselves to. But, uh, but you, know you know something, Jason, this is an important point, and, and let's not leave it. Okay? This, is a very, this is a very, very important point. You know, if, God forbid, a black person walks down the street right while we are speaking okay and a white police officer a black person walks on the street a white police officer stops him or her something goes wrong and the police arrest or police have to rough the person up or do whatever they do in terms of uh, um taking care of the situation it's going to be on the news we'll hear how horrible it is we'll hear that the police officer selected that person only because that person was black and on and on it will go we'll hear about racism in america but this reparation is telling us all i have to do to know who should pay for racism for for, for the racism of slavery all i have to do is to just look at you guys and i would know who should pay there is tim oh he's a white man there is jason he's a white man i know he should pay my ancestors he should pay me he should pay me for the sin of slavery and and we've already seen something like this happen uh in the jacob blake case in uh wisconsin uh mm -hmm. president biden simply just came out and said uh, uh the police officer needs to be arrested and then investigated right i mean arrested yeah. and then investigated and we already know what the outcome of that was jacob blake has already admitted to, to having a exactly. knife and we've seen the video and everything else that goes along with it we know that he was in the wrong in that instance and yet Biden was willing to condemn the police officer out of hand because he was white. You know, and that's the racist that we have in office right now. You know, just because he's su he's such a weak man that he literally just has to has to virtue signal to his group in order to have power. And it's just it's it's just disgusting. You know that that uh, you know this uh, you hear this poor police officer. I don't even know what his name was. But, you know, the idea that he can't even try to do his job, he's going to be condemned on his race before an investigation, which is just, you know, obscene. I, yeah. But there's, there's even a good example in, in, involving Obama. Obama um, has a very good friend named Henry Louis Gates. He's, he, he's a well-known um, African-American uh, studies professor. I think he was at Princeton at the time. He, he forgot his keys somewhere and he was trying to get into his home, his, his home. And obviously he couldn't get, he didn't have the key. So he was trying, he's literally trying to break in, break into his own home. A police officer, a white police officer was driving by the time, saw something looking suspicious. Now, I mean, I think any police officer will see that as suspicious. You're trying to break into a home. You, I don't know you. You're trying to break into a home. Anyway, a confrontation occurred. He ended up arresting Henry Louis Gates. Obama jumped out and said, this police officer acted so stupid. This police officer did this. They were about to ruin that police officer's career. Thank God it turns out that the guy was one of the guys who was training some of the people in the department on race sensitivity and some other things and that kind of stuff. And that is how he was saved from being destroyed, from his career being destroyed. On, on no evidence of any sort of racism of, uh, or any racist heart of this man, they were about to destroy his career because he arrested Henry Louis Gates at his home. When Henry Louis Gates was indeed acting suspicious, though it was at his own home. Well, and the sad thing is, you know, all of this stuff is really, 
you know, doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's, it's kind of being taught to us is where this is coming from. And, and yes. so you know, one of the things in the school districts now is, uh, you know, in, in New York is where this seems to be kind of a hot button, you know, and Buffalo school districts are telling students that uh, all white people play a part in perpetuating systemic racism. Sounds like a pretty racist statement uh, as is. But then at the New York City <laughs> School District, well, is circulating this chart. And I'm going to share a chart with you guys. Uh, it, it wouldn't uh, have been that keyword all. Yeah, uh, that, that, that made you right. say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told, you know, I told you guys, you know, you, you white guys that cause all the problems in society. You didn't know that, right? You didn't know that. Yes, yes, we all have. <laughs> uh, let me see here. I should have this image up for you momentarily. But uh, there we go. Okay. I don't know if you guys, yeah, you guys can see yes, this. Yes, oh, yeah, oh yeah, wow. Right. In the New York City school districts, this is what they're, and this isn't anything, you know, groundbreaking here uh, for our show. It's been all over. I mean, I think they, even Bill Maher had it on his show. I mean, they, this this nonsense is even waking up some people on the left, which is just sure. crazy. Yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's a white identities chart. They're handing out to, uh, they, I think they handed this to parents of kids in the school district. Uh, and, you know, they're probably teaching this in the school to the kids as well. You know, and this is in, I, th I believe, K through 12. And, you know, they're, they're telling people that all white people fall on this the chart. So imagine uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine so, that. Uh, it, it, I know. It, what the heck do they mean by white voyeurism? <laughs> that's that's supposed to be like white people who sit around, I think, do uh, enjoying rap music and 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 sort of virtue signaling that kind of stuff, you know, maybe like an Eminem or something. You mean, <laughs> like, you, you, you mean it's like saying when when somebody accused them of racism, they say, I have a white friend. I'm yeah, not a white friend. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 white guys acting black, right? I acting guess. black, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Black guys acting white, you know, whatever. Right? It's so stupid. Well, I, I don't know. I would I, I don't don't know about that, uh, Jason. Only looking at the chart, it looks like it goes from worse in the red zone to the green zone. Where you, yeah. so maybe what you're describing is the white traitor, and yeah. then finally you get to the white abolitionist. Well, and, no, 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 no. So, so they I think that the voyeur isn't good enough because he's not actually turning in other white people. Right. So <laughs> you, oh. you have to be somebody who's finding the racism and canceling Dr. Seuss or something else. Yeah. The yeah white yeah. traitor or the abolitionist, you know, oh, <laughs> you're not. Okay. You, have to be, you have to be a good white person to, to, to be on to be on the, um, the right side of the chat. Yeah. A good white person. Yeah. The, the, the bootlicker is actually the, the abolitionist. That's the one who, who uh, you uh, know, they, they have their their uh, preferences in flavor and texture of boot, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, a, they're a boot connoisseur. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 you know, this, this is a poison that they're teaching to our children, though. Okay. This is a poison that they're teaching to our children. That we cannot see each other as human beings. We cannot see each other as Americans. We have to see each other as either an enemy or you are um, or you are something else other than another human being or another or another American. We can't interact as individuals. We must interact as a black person or as a white person, not as individuals, not as human beings. This is the poison that they are teaching. And to me, these people will not be satisfied until there's some sort of race, race war here in the United States. Because that is what, this is the propaganda that they are poisoning the minds of our children with. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's just appalling. And that's our schools today, which aside from the fact that they're not even, you know, uh, they don't even want to open up. But uh, yeah, anyways, it is time for our knucklehead noise patrol. And what we have for no, you Biden, Biden, Bi I'm sorry but to say, but I have to say this. Biden want to open the borders and let everybody in, but he don't want to open the schools to educate our children who are here in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sorry where his values are. <laughs> He's just kind of a, a babbling <laughs> lunatic, you know, that we put into office. But uh, he, yeah, we, we get to focus on him for our knucklehead noise patrol this time. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, Biden wants us all to know how racially sensitive he is and, you know, canceling 
Dr. Seuss and supporting all this sensitivity training and everything else. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's amazing when you really drill down to what he really thinks of people who are not white. And here's what he said. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, when he was interviewed uh, by uh, uh, Cooper, Anderson Cooper on CNN, and he said, uh, not everybody in the community, in the Hispanic and African American community, particular in rural areas that are uh, distant and or inner city distant, uh, know how to use, know how to get online to determine how to get in line for that COVID vaccination at the Walgreens or at the particular at the particular stores. And sorry if that's all broken up. That's just the way Biden talks normally. <laughs> so aside from there not being any kind of logic or integrity to it, you know, he, he just, you know, it, it sort of babbles too. But, <laughs> but I, yeah, I mean, how racist. I mean, the guy, you know, remember this is a guy who said about Obama, you know, he's so clean and articulate. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and that, that was his compliment. That was his compliment. Yes, he's so clean. <laughs> And well spoken, you know. He never, he never saw such a, he never saw such a black person before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this is, but this is Joe Biden, you see, and he's a Democrat, so he could get away with this kind of stuff. He could tell us, you know, if um, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. He could tell us that on other things. So this half seen a racist beat an incumbent president by sitting in his in his basement. Boy, I wonder how that happened, boy. I truly wonder. I really would. So oh. confusing. <laughs> oh, Screaming Eagle, you got any thoughts on this? Oh, God. It's it's just so out there. Uh, you know, it's this guy, I don't know. I, I know he's going to give us a lot of uh, stuff, but, I mean, we may get tired of beating up on him uh, after a while. Uh, <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> So what was this about the vaccine? They, they yes, can't exactly. Go yes, uh, yes. Know, can't to to go to the local store, your Walgreens or your local drugstore. <clears throat> obviously, you can't read the sign that get your vaccine here when you drive down the street or you walk down the street or you go to the grocery store next door and you walk by the display case uh, uh, and and you, you see the sign on the Walgreens that they got, they got vaccines here. You got to be able to go online. And if you, and they, of course, well, well we all know uh, that you can't go online uh, if you're black, right? Because yeah. you just don't know how to make a computer. You don't know how to turn a yeah. computer on. Joe, Joe Biden is yeah. just telling us we too, we, we too dumb and we too lazy yeah, yeah, exactly. to, to figure, to figure exactly. it out. That's all. Yeah. Well, uh, well uh, we, we do know how to turn a computer on and off on this show, and we are just about out of time. <laughs> Sorry, i got to catch you guys off. <laughs> but thank you for joining us for another episode of Knuckleheads of Liberty, and uh, you can catch us at uh, uh, libertariancounterpoint.com, and uh, there's Facebook pages. This is Gail Morgan with Libertarian Counterpoint Productions. Knuckleheads of Liberty, Monday nights at 5.30 on Channel 17, Libertarian Counterpoint on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on Channel 17. Also, you may catch our shows on YouTube, Facebook, and on other social media.